Welcome, Coral Reef Aquarium School, basic. Today is our eighth episode and uh, we will be talking about light. Light is important, third to flow and temperature in the Coral Reef Aquarium. And the reason being it is that the majority of the absorbed energy for corals comes from light and photosynthesis. Furthermore, light is a very hot topic for experts within the hobby to discuss and dispute. We will do this basic and um, starting with daylight or sunlight, um, it contains all the colors of the spectrum, but it is at different intensities. Then as daylight or sunlight goes uh, through the water, and down to the coral reef, uh, three to five meters below the sea, this spectrum and the intensity has changed with absorption and reflection. Now, um, I will give the uh, approximate intensities in the figure to the right here. And of course, it would be um, tempting to mimic this spectrum with an aquarium light. But we will not do that. We will actually do something better. We will tailor the spectrum to fit coral photosynthesis ability. Now why do we do that and not mimic sunlight? Because the reason is that we want to give our sensitive symbiotic invertebrate friends a competitive advantage over for instance algae. So we really try to boost coral uh, growth. In the aquarium or the benefits for corals. So how do that type of light look like? It is a full spectrum light but with significantly higher intensities in the blue and purple part. Um, I'll give you an example how it can look to fit uh, uh, coral abilities to absorb energy. And then on top of that, we will stretch the intensities to uh, fit our personal taste and uh, how we think we want to portray our corals. Now, the reason with the pictures is just to illustrate the example. Don't take the exacts on the pictures. Okay, moving on. Here is a trade off. The intensity and the spectrum will influence your coral appearance. If you have too high intensity, you can bleach the coral and even get the coral to start residing. And if it's too low, the coral can go brown and it can also start residing. Furthermore, in the trade-offs, actually what might happen is that the coral may look different in the shop where you're buying it. And the color can even change up to six weeks after the introduction in your tank. So, and this, uh, the reason why is because of possibly different spectrum, different wavelength of the light in your aquarium versus the shop and also different intensities. So it's good to know that this can happen and that could be a reason to it. Okay, what type of technologies are we typically dealing with when it comes to coral reef aquariums? First of all, um, Coral reefs, they grow in areas where there is uh, close to the equator where there's a lot of light, um, a lot of power in the light. So we are mimicking the uh, sunlight with high power light systems. Historically, we would be looking at metal halide technology or T5 and power compact solutions. And these are still used. You will see them uh, in the hobby and in discussions but they're used less and less. We will focus our discussion solely to LED lighting because it's, in my opinion, it's more energy efficient and it's also more affordable currently. Okay. I also need to introduce some terminology discussing about light. First, PAR. I think when you read up on the forum and discussions, there's a lot of discussions about PAR. PAR stands for photosynthetically active radiation. 
So you measure the amount of light available at a certain location or depth in the aquarium and you measure uh, how much light in the wavelength of 400 to 700 newton uh, nanometers there is. So the amount of light in the visible spectrum, you measure that with. And how do you measure it? You use a PAR meter. So it's a measurement gauge to measure the PAR level at different locations in your aquarium. Now, PAR, it is the visible spectrum. Um, but then complexity adds a little bit further and you will also probably encounter discussions about PUR. What is PUR? That is photosynthetically utilized radiation. And that is the light energy over the same wavelength, but only the spectrum where chlorophyll utilizes the energy, typically higher in the blue range. And now, it gets very technically very quick. And I think there's a lot to learn, and there's even more to get lost in. And we will not continue down this path for a basic course. Now, we will go back to basics. How do you select the LED light? And I'm trying to do it as simple as possible. First, some crude sizings. I think uh, crude power figures, what you should start looking for in your aquarium, is somewhere 0 0.5 to 1 watt per liter. And I emphasize on 0 0.5 or 2 to 4 watts per gallon. Now, there is an asterisk on that one because now that the power gauge is actually uh, affordable, this rule of thumb is kind of criticized. And it's also criticized because there's a lot of poor quality LEDs available in the market. Uh, so, and if it's poor quality, it, it renders this uh, rule of thumb uh, invalid. So that's also criticized. But from my perspective, I actually... 15 years ago, we used a rule of thumb for metal halides or, or T5 lightings, and the discussion was similar. Um, it's because we, we had uh, poor quality metal halides and poor quality uh, uh, T5 lighting as well. It's just that... Um, so, uh, actually, I still th see a gain in using the power, uh, power figures. But here, now we're looking into comparing to metal halide or T5, yeah, LEDs, they are more efficient and then we're even better at targeting in at the uh, uh, blue range where we get the good photosynthesis. So here we've seen the power figures tick down drastically uh, with the efficiency. So some crude uh, power figures. So that means if you have a 100 liter tank, uh, I would um, recommend you to start looking somewhere around a 50 watt LED lighting with a good coverage for the tank volume. Furthermore, not just power figures. We also look at the spectrum that's provided with the um, light. And I'm looking for a full spectrum, but in the full spectrum I'm looking for an overweight in blue. I also looking for a, a red part represented because there's a small bump in the red part for the chlorophyll photosynthesis. And then actually a, a, a preference, I prefer also to have UV represented in my light. And then some features. I prefer the light to be dimmable and also time controlled. So, so you can control when the light turns on, how it dims up and how it turns off. So I recommend that. And then finally, I actually recommend a little bit more power in your uh, LED system uh, than uh, what you actually need. And then I'm talking about the 0 0.5 part of the rule or the 2 watt per gallon part of the rule. Because the benefit if you have a little bit more powerful light, it is that my experience at least you get a little bit longer lifetime of your LED light fixture because you're running them, you dim them down so the entire fixture is running cooler and um, if it's running cooler then you age lenses and you age the LED uh, crystals um, a lot less. 
it's a little bit more than you need so you can run the lighting cooler okay i will give a practical example for a spectrum now i select a ai prime 16 hd spectrum as an example so here we see it's a full spectrum uh, light and uh, there's an overweight in the blue uh, it has a red part uh, slightly bumped and it also has a uv part i think this is an excellent example and uh, on my experience actually the baseline spectrum not re not rebalancing it i think it's uh, very satisfying for coral growth okay quickly about light in our next episode we will be talking about filtration and absorbers. And now, as we usually do, we will stop this. Um, um, we will stop this session about light and face over to the project part, where we see what light we will use for the project. And I hope you stay tuned. See you then. Okay. For the project part about light, we will be using this AI Prime 16 HD Reef uh, light. This turns out to be way overpowered for the small aquarium uh, I'm using for the project. I um, have evaluated a few um, low power versions of light, but it ended up with me not being satisfied with the spectrum and how my uh, corals actually appeared under this light so i actually went back to a more powerful version and uh, where i knew that okay this spectrum i'm actually satisfied with um, this i can work with so we're gonna have this one uh, dimmed down heavily over the aquarium i think it's gonna work perfectly um i'm not so worried about uh, this what this light can deliver now we'll do as we usually do for the project part we will now face over for a picture where i show where i've installed this uh, light over the aquarium and as we look at that installation i'd like to thank you for your attention and um, i uh, hope to see you in the next episode and i also would like to wish you a pleasant evening <laughs>